Keith? One second, please. Okay. The person looking at my shoulder wasn't ready. Good, Ray? All set, Audrey. Okay. I'm going to call to order this meeting of the Winston Board of Selectmen on Friday, April 2nd, 2020 at 6.30 p.m. If you'd please join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you very much. Um, I just need to confirm uh, member access as a preliminary matter. This is Audrey Labrie, Chair of the Board of Selectmen. Permit me to confirm that all members and persons anticipated on the agenda are present and can hear me. Members, when I call your name, please respond in the affirmative. Barbara. Aye. Amy. Aye. Mike. Aye. Rick. Aye. Good. Next is the staff. Uh, when I call your name, please respond in the affirmative. Uh, Keith Hickey, town manager. Aye. Um, Linda, is Linda here as well? Yes. Hi. Dadego, executive assistant. Hi. Um, anticipated speakers on the agenda. Um, we do have some um, audience members who have logged in with us. Uh, I know of no one in particular who is going to be speaking this evening. Uh, introduction to remote meeting. Good evening. This open meeting of the Board of Selectmen is being conducted remotely consistent with Governor Baker's recent executive order of March 12, 2020, due to the current state of emergency in the Commonwealth due to the outbreak of the COVID-19 virus. In order to mitigate the transmission of the COVID-19 virus, we have been advised and directed by the Commonwealth to suspend public gatherings, and as such, the governor's order suspends the requirement of the open meeting law to have all members beg your pardon, to have all meetings in a publicly accessible physical location. Further, all members of public bodies are allowed and encouraged to participate remotely. The order, which you can find posted with agenda materials for this meeting, allows public bodies to meet entirely remotely, so long as reasonable public access is afforded so that the public can follow along with the deliberations of the meeting. Ensuring public access does not ensure public participation unless such participation is required by law. This meeting will feature public comment. For this meeting, the Board of Selectmen is convening by video conference via Zoom meeting ID number 1023491. As posted on the town's website, identifying how the public may join. Please note that this meeting is being recorded and that some attendees are participating by video conference. Accordingly, please be aware that other folks may be able to see you and to take care not to screen share your computer. Anything that you broadcast may be captured by the recording. Supporting materials that have been provided members of this body are available on the town's website unless otherwise noted. The public is encouraged to follow along using the posted agenda unless noted otherwise. Ground rules for the business meeting. We are now turning to the first item on the agenda. Before we do, permit me to cover some ground rules for effective and clear conduct of our business and to ensure accurate meeting minutes. I will introduce each speaker on the agenda. After they conclude their remarks, the chair will go down the line of members, inviting each by name to provide any comment, questions, or motions. Please hold until your name is called. 
further, please remember to mute your phone or computer when you are not speaking. And please remember to speak clearly and in a way that helps generate accurate minutes. Any response, please wait until the chair yields the floor to you and state your name before speaking. If members wish to engage in discussion with other members, please do so through the chair, taking care to identify yourself. For items with public comment, after members have spoken, the chair will afford public comment as follows. The chair will first ask members of the public who wish to speak to identify their names and addresses only. Once the chair has a list of all public commentators, I will call on each by name and afford three minutes for any comments. Finally, each vote taken in this meeting will be conducted by roll call vote. Are there any questions on uh, conducting open meeting? Uh, is anyone audio or video recording this evening other than the usual? All right, moving on to our agenda. Um, selectman's comments and announcements. Uh, we'll work back down the, uh, the alphabet. Rick, we'll start with you. Okay, Madam Chair, I feel the need to make a public statement. In the spirit of transparency, I wish to let Winston residents know that earlier this week concern was raised with regards to my volunteer work with the nonprofit Friends of Old Murdoch Senior Center and whether or not that was a conflict of interest with my right to discuss vote as a selectman on tonight's agenda item, the inclusion of a debt exclusion question on the Springtown ballot for senior center repairs. Having retired after more than 27 years as a US Department of Defense employee, I am fully cognizant of rules and requirements of conflict of interest law. And as a result, was surprised that volunteering my time an effort with seven other senior citizens to find ways to raise some funds to provide for special meals, programs, and transportation for our fellow citizens at the town senior center would lead anyone to feel it was a conflict with my role as a selectman. Nevertheless, I followed proper procedures and co contacted town council attorney Brian Riley for his decision. And as I suspected, he said there is no financial interest involved either for me or the Friends of Old Murdoch Senior Center with regards to tonight's discussion and vote. For those who still feel there may be an appearance of bias, I followed his advice and filed an appearance disclosure form with the town clerk's office, which I believe is available for anyone to see. Finally, as I attested to and signed at the bottom of the disclosure form, I will continue, as always, to perform my official duties objectively and fairly. Therefore, I will not recuse myself from any discussion of any kind or vote with regards to repairs of our town's senior center. Thank you. Thank you, Rick. Um, Mike, any comments this evening? No comments at this time. Thank you. All right, thank you. Barbara? Not at this time. Uh, Amy? None at this time. All right, thank you. And um, I have nothing particular. Again, hope everybody's uh, hanging in and doing the best you can. Watching the daffodils come up. Uh, do we have any public comment or announcements this evening? All right, seeing and hearing none. Um, there's no hearing this evening. We have no appointments or resignations to review. Uh, no permit license applications. Uh, nothing uh, from boards, commissions, committees. Uh, one item we do have, new business. Discussion on including a $3.8 million debt exclusion question on the Springtown ballot for the uh, Old Murdoch Senior Center repairs. Uh, I'll let you start this off for us. Thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, I want to thank the board for being willing to come out tonight and have another meeting. Uh, this topic was intended to be discussed on Monday night, uh, but when the budget was uh, tabled to a future date, the, this topic um, was 
accidentally uh, bypassed. So, <clears throat> excuse me, the, um, there's an opportunity to uh, include on our local town ballot um, an article about repairing the uh, old Murdoch High School. Uh, it's been discussed at a board meeting. The, uh, the impression that I was left with uh, was the board was looking to make those repairs to that particular piece of property rather than uh, other options or exploring other options for uh, replacing that building or moving the senior center to some other, other property. Um, if, this, if this article was to be placed on the ballot prior to town meeting, uh, it would save um, between seven and eight, I'm sorry, five and eight thousand dollars, depending on how long you wanted to keep the polls open uh, for a special uh, election. Uh, it is allowed uh, to be placed on a ballot prior to town meeting. Um, the, uh, there would need to be an affirmative vote. Uh, both on, on the ballot and the town meeting for this um, article to be approved and funding to be to be approved. Um, what we're trying, what I'm trying to do, I guess, is uh, in, in scheduling this meeting, is to um, be able to provide a, have a decision by the board of selectmen if they're comfortable doing so this evening, providing the public an idea of uh, and giving them an idea and some time to digest. Uh, what's been proposed, what the impacts are going to be to the taxes and things of that nature. Um, the town clerk uh, is, is if, if there is a, uh, an ability or the, for the board to make a decision this evening, the town clerk will finalize the, the warrant and send that warrant off to, um, to the printer. So we'll be able to allow for early voting and absentee ballots uh, as quickly as we possibly can. Um, I've included in the board packet for you um, the estimated annual cost and the tax impact uh, if, the, if this funding request was approved uh, for both a 20 and a 30 year note. Uh, so you have a sense of, of uh, what those bond payments would look like and what the impact on an average tax assessed house would be. Um, lastly, uh, I reached out to our engineers uh, yesterday to let them know that, um, uh, or to ask the question, uh, I guess, uh, if this were to be delayed uh, for another construction season, um, what, what does he anticipate the cost increase to be? And would there be any risk to continue to utilize that building for potentially another year without prior to repairs being made? Uh, his response was that he expected the costs to increase between three and five percent would be his best guess um, from what they what they've been included what the amounts were that were included uh, in their report that three to five percent is um, between one hundred and twelve and one hundred and eighty eight thousand dollar increase um, and lastly he said that there's it's tough to say whether or not there'd be any any potential impact of the building by waiting a year uh, his comment was um, that the, you know, the more severe the weather, obviously, the more uh, impact there could be to um, that building remaining uh, as it is for an additional year. But there was no um, immediate concern that that building may be used for uh, another season prior to repairs occurring. Thank you, Mr. Hickey. Um, I'll open it up to board members. Um, someone wants to start or I can do a roll call and just do, make your comments at that point. Um, Madam Chair, I'll start because I- Okay, uh, and again, please just say who you are. Okay, sorry, it's Barbara. Because uh, I have a lot of really serious concerns. When you made the assumption that we would be in favor of this, project, we had no idea at that time what was coming, financially, economically, and um, I don't know, the security of our residents right now is our top concern. And knowing what we know now and having as little information as we do now, we really have no idea what to anticipate in the year 
the months coming up. So I think at this time, it would be really poor judgment to put this on the ballot. I think we need to wait. We need to wait until we see if people are going to be getting their jobs back at least a couple of weeks. Right now, they're anticipating a 32% unemployment rate. That's huge. The Great Depression was 25%. I want you guys to take that into consideration. Every increase would kill, hurt somebody, tragically. And we have to put the good of the whole town before the interests of a few. As much as it breaks my heart to do this, I think at this time it would be in really poor judgment to rush to put this on a ballot in June when we don't know what's going to happen. Okay, thank you, Barbara. Um, do, would anyone else like to comment? Madam Chair? Yes, Rick. Rick Ward here. Thank you. Uh, I understand the situation in the U.S. today, but that building is not going to get any better by waiting, and the costs are only going to go up. This decision is a big one for the town. It should not be decided by five selectmen. This is a town meeting form of government we have. If the town doesn't want to support it, and they may not support it, let them decide. They have to vote twice to approve this. Why are we trying to pull that decision from the people of the town? They're going to clearly tell us in June, we don't want this on the, at the town meeting or at the, at the ballot. And if they do say they can handle it, let them decide. It's their choice, not ours. Madam Chair, it's Barbara. Yes, Barbara. I would like to say that at this time, we don't even know if we'll get to the ballot in June. We don't even know that. Every day that goes by looks a little scarier and a little bit scarier. I think we need to be prudent and just wait. I don't know why we have to make the decision. According to Mr. Hickey, we had, we had to have the ballots printed up 30 days before the election. Correct? Mr. Hickey? Uh, uh, Not what you told us in an email? 30, we uh, had to do it 30 days prior? If I, if I may, because I have the email open right now um, from KP Law. Uh, any ballot question has to be provided to the town clerk no later than 35 days before the election. And the election is not until June 15th. Depend well, it at hasn't been time. set yet. Yeah, it has not been set yet, correct. Well, at this time. So why are we deciding this on April 2nd with very little information? Is that a question to me? Yeah. Okay, so I don't think you have to make a decision tonight if you're not, if you're not comfortable doing so. Um, the, the concerns that you're, you've, you've expressed, I share. Um, but uh, to, I think to Mr. Ward's point, you know, the building's not getting any better. You guys are gonna have to make a decision when you think it's best to bring something forward to the voters. Do you have to make a decision this evening? You don't have to make a decision this evening. Um, uh, and you don't have to make a decision for 35 days prior, prior to the, the election, if that's what you wanna do. It's going to minimize the ability for some people to either uh, early vote or, uh, at, or file an absentee ballot. Um, I wanted to bring this forward this evening, uh, not because I'm trying to rush anything, uh, but because it was supposed to be discussed on Monday and it wasn't. Uh, so I wanted to bring that forward this evening uh, at, at the earliest time we could legally do so, so the board could at least have a discussion about it um, and, and move on from there. Keith, if I may, and this is Audrey. Um, when, how are the early voting dates established? Once we know when the election is, count back X number of weeks or whatever, and that's when the early voting will take place? Or how is that determined? It's typically determined by the Secretary of State. This, this election might be a little bit different because of the delays and whatnot. Right. But obviously, the early voting can't start until the ballots are here. Um, so, okay. you know, that's a factor. Is that an overriding factor to whether or not you should make a decision tonight? No, I don't think right. I would, um, but it's, it's something that, that people need to be aware of. Okay. 
Thank you. All right. Um, Mike, uh, do you wish to weigh in on this issue? Um, so my feeling on the matter is that, um, the, that the town will need to vote on this. It's a very important issue for the community. Um, the only issue I have with this right now is that, um, is that we are putting the cart before the horse. And I say this in this manner, um, always before we've had a vote, uh, uh, an override vote or a debt exclusion vote, it was put to town meeting as um, whether to go forward with it, put it on the ballot or not, I have a special election. I understand the cost factor right now, but the, the thing about the, it is the, town meeting is gonna dictate policy um, we have the simplest form of government, which is people come to town meeting and express, um, express their views on the matter. I am, I am, don't get me wrong, I am in favor of having um, Old Murdoch repaired um, because I think, you know, uh, there's two reasons. A, it is a, a gathering place for our senior citizens. Also, that the town entered into an agreement with the state in the 90s to make that a historical and took some money for it. So we're going to have to fix this building. It's just a matter of how we go about it. And you know whether we do it by ballot ahead of time on, on the town election ballot or by a, a special election afterwards. We are, we are definitely, you know, because the town did sign up for this, we are going to be on the hook for the repair of that building. It's just a matter of how we go about it. And, and, and so that's where, where I'm kind of looking at this because um, I, I think that the town has always gone you know, to town meeting first and said, let us put this to the town voters at town meeting and then let it go forward from there for a ballot vote. Um, and this would just be a, a total change of operation for us. I understand the cost factor, um, but again, I, I think we, we know we need to be doing this. It's just a matter of how we go about it. And I'm, I'm really not sure which way I'm, 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 I'm leaning towards it. Okay. Thank you. I'm sorry, Barbara. You? Barbara, Barbara, yes. Um, I would like to, also, I also think Mike is right. You know, we always go to town meeting first and then it goes to ballot. And that's usually the way to do it. I understand Mr. Hickey's desire to save the town, you know, $5,000, but I'm right now in the middle of a crisis. These are unusual times. This is not a time to be doing things backwards, even though it might be legal. It's still a little bit backwards. It's not what the town is mm -hmm. used to. And um, it's still too early to really say, quite frankly, I, the, the that exclusion would be better off if we all supported it. And right now, with I have no idea what what it supported. I have phone calls out. People are supposed to be getting back to me, but they all say it's going to take weeks. Right. And and so right now, I I I wouldn't support it. Okay. Thank you, Barbara. Um, Amy, any thoughts or comments? Um, yes, this is Amy. Um, my thought is, you know, I'm, I'm very concerned for finances. I'm an extremely um, financial conservative person. And I don't, you know, yeah, I know old, I love old Murdoch. We need a senior center. It needs to be repaired. But I don't think we should put anything out there right now about, you know, making any, any large improvements or anything because we just don't know. And I'm very concerned for the, even for the state itself, for the finances of the state. So I'm not, you know, I personally, you know, as a selectman, I'm not going to support it right now, but I also don't think we should put it out there. We should, you know, we can hold off on this, um, you know, get even get through the summer and then take a look at how things are looking, what kind of money we're going to get from the state and how we come through. You know, I'm concerned for the summer. I, it's going to be a huge fallout financially, as well as just, you know, in general, we're, we're just trying to get through here. And, you know, too many, this is affecting so many people and it's just beginning. You know, we haven't even peaked with the, you know, the illness of people. And right. this is a really bad time. And I don't think we should put it out there. 
And I don't know if we put it out there, if we can follow through with it. I'm not sure. Okay. Just my Thank you. Of course. Thank you, Amy. Um, okay. So I think we all agree it's something that we do need to address. Um, I want to, you know, Keith, thanks for bringing it uh, before us. As you said, I, you and I had talked about it on Monday afternoon, and then um, I didn't even think of it Monday night myself. So bringing it before the board to have a preliminary conversation is great. Um, do we want to, does anyone want to make a motion at this point? Or um, we, have, we have an issue before, so there should be a motion, I would say, you know, one way or the other to either uh, include it or to not include it. Madam Chair, so, Barbara. Do we yes, Barbara. Do we have to make that motion or can we just table this Warren article at this time or the ballot question at this time? Well, um, <clears throat> we could probably table it, but then we would just have to take it up again sometime between now and when the ballot's going to be printed. Right, but it, I mean, my, my argument is it's possible in two weeks time we'd have more information. We'd have some kind of an idea. And I'm not even sure we will because I think Amy's right too that it could be summer before right. we have any idea, before people are back to work, if they go back to work. We just don't know. But sure. two weeks is better than nothing. Okay. And we have to do today. Okay. Um, Keith, um, your thoughts on instead of going aye or nay completely tonight, um, revisiting this again on our April 13th meeting? Sure, this is Keith. And absolutely, I can, that, if the board wants to revisit at that time and, and have a better sense at that point where things stand, uh, you can certainly do that. Okay. Madam Chair? Yes, Mr. Barbaro. Yeah, I would um, ask that we uh, table at this time and bring it up at the second meeting in April. And I'm going to say the reason being is that uh, according to the governor at that time, we should be on the other side of the uh, surge. The peak. So we'll have a yeah. better idea uh, where we are as far as our population goes um, okay. and where, where we stand as a state. We'll, we'll have a better a uh, handle on where we're, where we're, in which direction we're heading. If the surge is not what they expect it to be, uh, I think, you know, and it tamps down, I think it'll give us a better education, indication of which way the state will be moving as far as freeing up, um, you know, restrictions. And if, it's, and if it tends to be worse, then we'll have an idea of how long it might last and give us a little more of an idea of even if we're gonna have town meeting in June. Okay. So was that a motion? Was there a motion in there somewhere, Mike? <laughs> yeah, I'm sorry. I make a, no, let, me re, let me rephrase myself. I like okay. to make a motion that we hold this issue, we table this issue till the second meeting in April. April 27th. Correct. That we can bring this back up at this time. <coughs> All right, we, have a motion, we have a motion to table until our April 27th meeting. Madam Chair? Yes. It's Barbara. I would second that. Okay, made and seconded um, by Barbara. Made by Mike, seconded by Barbara. Um, any further discussion? Uh, seeing no hands waving. Um, roll call vote. Um, Amy? Aye. Barbara? Aye. Mike? Aye. Rick? Aye. And chair votes aye, Audie votes aye. So we are going to table this um, until April 27th and come back and maybe we'll be in a better position at that point to, to do something. Madam Chair, it's Barbara. Yes. yes. Um, before we adjourn, could I just ask, um, I think because everybody in town is concerned with what is going on in town that we be provided updates as well, you know, how are things going on at Broadview and how things are going on at Housing Authority? Um, I think people are getting very, very nervous and, and we should have an update for as far as what's going on in general. Okay. Um, Keith, is that something you can think about? And 
I was, uh, as I've been doing the last couple of weeks, anyways, I was going to do a uh, old red call again on, uh, on tomorrow okay. and uh, make people aware of, of uh, the most recent uh, um, updates uh, just for tonight. Uh, at this point, there are five people in Winston that have been reported positive with the COVID-19 virus. Um, because of HIPAA, you know, we've got some restrictions on what we can share because of the HIPAA laws. Um, so we can talk about, you know, the numbers, but we really can't get into locations, obviously, um, because we may be providing too much information. Okay. The state health officials have recommended communities not um, not get into a lot of specifics because it, ha it, it seems to raise even more concerns with uh, in town. Um, okay. Madam Chair, it's Barbara. Yes. I, I, I think nobody is really looking for specifics. They're, they're just looking for overall, you know, what do we have? You know, five new cases. Um, and I think just some reassurance. Oh, the other question I had for Mr. Hickey, and it mm -hmm. was something I noticed and I'm not sure, maybe he can answer the question, but when, when he does the code red, it comes out to our phones. Is that correct? It does. And then I think certain people in town are saying they didn't get their phone call and they didn't understand why, but they usually get emails from the town. So that other program that we signed up for on the town's webpage, not code red, it was something that mm -hmm. it has come to me those don't merge. Is that correct? That's correct. correct. That's correct. Um, so if you do something on code red, is it possible to send something out in the email form as well for the sure. other? Absolutely. Because I noticed that there was some yeah, happy to do it. Why some people got it and some didn't. Okay. That's a good point. <clears throat> All right. Anything further this evening? <laughs> Madam Chair? Yes, Mike. Motion to adjourn. Madam Chair, second. Rick Thank Warden. you. Thank you. Motion has been made uh, by Mike, seconded by Rick to adjourn. Any further discussion? Hearing none, roll call vote. Amy? Aye. Barbara? Aye. Mike? Aye. Rick? Aye. And Chair votes aye. We are adjourned at 7.03. Thank you so much, everyone. Have a good